Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about one of the important stuff. As a developer, you must know a few things. Developing an application, it's not enough. So once we develop the application, we need to implement the JUnit test cases. And just applying JUnit test cases is not going to help you entirely because we have some flaws in JUnit. And that is where the marketer framework comes into picture and that will help us to make sure the JUnit is working even much better. So in this particular uh, tutorial, we will talk about create a simple application. It's not a simple application. Let's create some business application which contains some complex logics. So we don't want to create a simple hello world application. So let's create an application and then we'll apply some JUnit test cases and then we'll talk about what is the issues with the JUnit and why we are going to mark it up. Mark frameworks. Okay, so just in case uh, if you are already aware of uh, creating the Spring Boot application or creating a normal simple Java application, you can skip it and you can move on to the, the JUnit part. And once it is done, what we're going to do is we're going to enhance the same application into a, a REST application. So which means I'm going to convert my normal methods into a REST API methods and then we'll apply the uh, same JUnit and the Mockito test for the REST APIs as well. Okay, so first of all, I just created a simple uh, Spring Boot application. Okay, so if you open the POM file, there won't be much of uh, dependencies here. So we have the, the starter test and we have the starter. So this is just a simple web starter project. And we added few things, Markito core and then model mapper, which I added for some business logic purpose. I'll show you that later. And also I added the JUnit versions as well. So you can add these or into your palm files and then do a build. Then we have all things ready to move on. Okay. So whenever you're going for your real time application, you need to have a data, right? And now we are not going to uh, communicate the, uh, uh, communicate to the database because we're going to handle the data using the offline repository. So basically we are going to use the hard coded information, which we are going to keep it in a, some Java files. Okay, so we're gonna act, we, we're gonna act that offline database as a, a database. So here, if you take a look at, we have a, a different methods, get all person and get person and get person optional as well. So let's talk about employee. So if you take a look at the employee, it has a name, height, salary, gender, kids and hobbies. Also, it has the address as well. So basically the offline database, what it does is whenever you call get all persons or you can modify the name as a get all employees as well. It will give you a list of employees. So this is the database and we're going to work with the, this data, right? So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to create some business logic, for example, it is just an employee, right? So we need to uh, have a method for creating a new employee or get all the employees or get employee by name and delete employee by name and update. So all the CRUD methods we are required. So we're going to create all of them. Let's close this. Okay. Let's close. Okay. The first thing first. So this is our uh, Java source location. And here we have the test. Java location for now we are going to concentrate on the only the Java portion. I mean the um, business logic perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class file here. I'm going to call them as a business service. Okay. So, and it has to be placed in a, some proper package, right? So, so let's keep it in some proper package. Like we can call them as a, a services, right? So, or we can call them as something different. I think services is fine. Service. So under the service package, I'm creating a business service. Okay. So now we got a, a business service. The next thing. So we are going to create a multiple methods, right? We always create a different methods to perform some different operations, but it's better. Always we have to have a separate class for implementation. So this is the business class which contains the method invocation, correct? So here what I'm going to do, we need to have the implementations as well, correct? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more class here. So employee service IMPL. So obviously it will end up with the issue because we don't have the IM, uh, IMPL class now, but let's create it. So create new um, employee service IMPL. 
Okay, the first thing, let's create this class. Create the class. And let's create the class under service or data. That's going to provide the data, right? So I'm going to call them as a data, not in the service. Data layer. And finish. Okay. So now we have an employee service implementation. Again, here we cannot directly write the method. Okay. So we need to have an interface which will help us to give you the methods. What are the methods we are looking for? So let's create some interfaces here. So I'm going to create, I'm going to provide something like implements and maybe I can call them as the I employee. Okay, so obviously it will throw error because we doesn't we don't have that interface yet, right? So now I'm going to create the interface, create interface I employee. And this is where we're going to define what are the methods I'm going to use. Okay, so we're going to declare the methods. So I'm going to write some methods here and then we'll continue. So we created five different methods, which means all the CRUD operations. So now the next thing what I'm going to do, the moment we created the interface, we got an error here because this is the interface implemented here, right? So the next thing what we need to do, we need to implement the methods, right? Okay, so how are we going to do that? Because we have the offline repository, which means the offline database, which contains all the get all persons. So we can use this method as a database method, which means the data is coming from the database okay let's assume that so this is the first method which will then get all employees so here what we're gonna do is offline database dot get all persons so which will give entire information about a specific person and then the second one is a delete an employee okay so before deleting let's uh, implement the get employee control x Okay, so let's put it here. Okay, so this is going to be get employee by name. So the way how we're going to retrieve that, we're going to use the Java 8 streams because we have a list of persons and we are going to use a filter to retrieve the exact person. So how we can do that? So I'm going to retrieve all the information from offline database, dot, get all persons. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the stream because if I have a stream, I can apply filter to it. So what is the condition I'm going to use filter? Okay, so I'm going to pass a predicate here. So I'm going to write the Lambda expression employee and the token. And what I'm going to check employee dot get name dot equals and the information is coming from the input. Okay, so is it enough? No, that is not enough. Okay, we have to return it back right so once it is done what i'm gonna do i'm gonna check find any 
So which means if it is finding any information which will give you give us the data back, but what will happen if nothing else? There is no data. So we have to throw an exception, right? So we can handle that using or else true. So here we're gonna write some custom exception. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write a lambda expression here and let's create some custom um, exception classes. So new employee exception. Obviously we got an error because we will get an error here because that particular uh, class is not existing before. So we're gonna create it now. So now, yes, and it's gonna accept two inputs. Like first one is okay, EMP 404, which means employee not phone. And then well, let's say uh, description employee not found, which is simple, right? So let's create the class. So create the class and let's keep it in a, add, um, a separate place, right? So we can keep it under exception folder. I mean, exception package actually. So here, the first thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna define two inputs here. So there is an error here because this constructor is not available, right? So once the class is created, the next thing what we need to do, create the constructor. Let's go back and create it. So let's create the fields first. So private and string and uh, exception code or error code and then private string error message and let's add this into a constructor so once you create the constructor we will get rid of the error message from the employee impl so here let's create constructor using fields and i want both of them okay so generate which is pretty good and save it and if you want, we can write the getters and setters. For now, getters and setters is not required. But anyway, let's add it because we might be needed a later point of time when we are implementing the REST APIs and save it. Now let's go back to the employee service implementation. The error will be gone now. Okay, so why? Okay, let's save it one more time. Okay, so we have to throw the exception, right? So here, what we're gonna do? Throws employee exception okay so that's all we need to do so now we are done with the get employee but why is another you might be wondering why still we have an exception here right because we create employee exception is a custom exception so we need to extend to the, the base exception right or else it's not considered as an exception class and now let's go back to the service IMPL obviously that will be gone and we throw the exception as well so we need to, because we added this signature right in the method. So obviously it has to add it in the our interface as well. So let's add that too. Okay, so we added it here. Now let's go back. Now the implementation is good. So now I have a method for get all the persons and I'll get the employees by the name. If employees exist, we will receive the employee or else we got the error message. Let's go back to the next one. So here is the different one. So we need to delete an employee from an existing a list so first thing let's retrieve the list of employees so we know how to do that right so list of employee and or i can say all employees is equal which is available in the offline database right offline database dot get all persons i should have named as all employees okay so the next thing so we got all employees right so what's the next thing so we need to have we have an employee name so if the employee name is existing in the employee database we have to delete it okay so how we can do that first thing we need to retrieve the iterator right so from the all employees what i'm gonna do is dot iterator let's create a variable for that sorry so let's create a variable for that so iterator employee and then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use the the while loop to move on one by one. So, sorry. While, and we all know what the next thing which we need to do, right? So, iterator dot has next. And then we'll open the body. And then we'll get the employee here. Employee EMP is equal to 
and iterator dot the next element got it so now we have an employee right so what we need to do so whether this employee has the same name so what we need to do we'll write a simple if condition here so if employee dot git name dot equals and the input which is coming from the method employee name equals then what we're gonna do we're gonna simply remove it right iterator dot remove okay and then so for delete employee do we need to return all the employee back the reason why we are returning all the employees back we need to check the list that the employees has been removed properly so i'm returning the all employees back here okay so now got it so what is the next one update is pretty much like a, a delete employee so i'm gonna just simply copy paste the code and we'll see so let's copy this Ctrl C, Ctrl D here. Ctrl V employee, all employee EMP. So this is the information employee coming from the input and I iterated employee here. So we don't need this condition anymore because we are gonna update the employee. Okay, so whatever the employee is coming. I'm gonna check whether the employee is existing then I'm gonna check I think we can use the same condition as well it's just a hardcore condition anyway so if you want you can do it or else you can simply directly use it so not I'm checking so sorry employee.get name and then what I'm doing this is input right so emp dot get name Okay, so if it is matches, which means that this is the employee which I need to update. Got it? So how I'm gonna do that? Simple, I'm not gonna do anything uh, pretty, pretty difficult here. So anyway, we have to uh, simply what we normally do. This is the employee which we need to update. So, correct? So what, what we normally do? Employee. dot set height and then what we will do we have the input right so emp dot get height so we have to do it for each and every element so instead of i'm gonna use the mapper so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the model mapper here so let's define a model mapper in the top so model mapper this is basically for converting domain object into D2 objects. So let's go down and then we'll do that here. So mapper dot and the method we're gonna use a map. Map and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna pass the source and then the destination so we created all of them so let's go back to the business service we just complete the implementation but we have a main business application here so we hear what we need to do we have to call all the methods correct so first method what do you want to do I think we can directly copy paste the same methods but the only thing is the implementation, we have to call it from here. I'm gonna keep the same name. That is the reason I'm copy pasting it here. And then what else we gonna do? We're gonna remove all the override. 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 Don't think I'm doing it too fast. So just to time consuming, I'm doing that. Okay, so now we don't need this implementation because I don't need the implementation in my business. Okay, so that is there in my implementation. So how we can call the implementation? This implementation is already available and we have the reference for that, correct? Service. So here what we're gonna do? Service dot get employees. I, we should have named as a get all employees. Okay, fine, that's fine. And here what we need to do? Service dot get employee by name and we need to pass the input as well. Got it. And next thing, delete an employee. Let's remove all the logic from here. 
and the one thing which we need to do return service dot uh, delete an employee and let's pass the employee name and we'll do pretty much the same thing here as well services dot update an employee and then we'll pretty much same here right so services dot add employee and we'll pass the inputs as well see now everything is pretty clear here okay so we have the business service here and we have the implementation and the implementation has separate class which contains different methods each and everything performs some business logic so now what we need to do is let's go back and create a j in these cases right okay so now we have the uh, this is all our source area i mean this is all our business implementation so now we need to write a business test cases so that is where we are going to use the src.test.java when you create a spring project you will get the uh, separate folder for uh, java sources and separate source for java test sources and now what we're going to talk about is we are going to create a simple a service here for running our test services so here let's expand it so here java.byte code and here what i'm gonna do is Mm. let's create a class name called employee service test correct so here i'm going to create a new class here and employee service this is our business right so it's the same business name i'm going to create a test and i want to keep them in a separate uh, package so test cases and then enter okay so now what we need to do is we are going to use the j unit test cases here so whatever the method we are returned in the implementation we have to write the i mean in the business service we have to write the j unit cases which means the reason why we need to write a j unit case cases because every time i cannot communicate to the database and get the information so you need to have some local data so whenever you make a code change you can test the changes against your local standalone data or simply you can call them as a hard coded data so that is how the jn will work right so now what we need to do so we have a get employee right so i'm gonna write a simple method for testing get employee it is going to be g unit okay and now let's go here okay so the way how we can create a simple method in test cases so this when when we run this particular class everything will run as a j unit file so we need to provide each and every method with annotated at test and then let's import it let's create a method here and i'm going to create void and get all employee get all employees underscore basic test okay so let's import the test as well or oh, that j unit okay so now what we need to do we need to have the reference so how we can do that we need to have the business service here so we can call them so business service and this is going to be a test is equal to new business service this is kind of i'm just again calling my method so we are not actually using any hard code information because we're going to directly using the business service and make the call okay so let's do that so here what i'm going to do is so let's call the first method test dot get all or get employee so which will eventually give us list of employees right okay so now what we need to do so now i got the data now i need to check the test cases so here what i'm gonna check i'm looking for a list of employee and i'm expecting whether it is returning a same kind of a response because j unit is basically working on so important uh, two important things so actual so what i'm expecting and the second one is what is that 
you can easily guess it whatever the data is coming from the api and received so or i can call them as an actual and that's also fine so now what i need to do i'm gonna use the assert same because i'm gonna check the type here i said same and here what i'm gonna do is uh, basically this is the employee which is coming as a list right so control c and control v here dot get class so basically what will happen this will return a list of employee right so now what i'm gonna do is let's use the implementation method so this employee service imp i'm just using as a bypass method because i don't want to because i cannot use the same here correct so what I'm doing here, implementation IMPL is equal to new. It will be IMPL. So basically what I'm trying to do here, here, what is happening here? Okay. So here I'm using IMPL dot get employee. So basically what I'm trying to do, because business service internally calls employee service implementation but here the reason why we are using something like this ultimately both of them are calling the same method but we don't want to hard code anything right now so that is the reason i just used something like that or else maybe we can do something even better i don't want this anymore so what i'm gonna do is so this is the api response and now i'm going to have my own hard coded data so where i can do that so here what i'm gonna do is a list of employee and list is equal to new array list okay so now what i'm gonna do so this is the expectation this is the expected type correct so what i'm expecting here i'm expecting list dot get class so which will give us an array list Correct. And then here, this is the exact outcome. So I'm checking with the outcome and what I'm expecting is both are same. So now what we can do is just simply right click the method and run as a J unit. No test cases found with J runner unit. Okay. What's the problem here? Oh, it is not running because test okay i'm using junit 5 but i'm importing junit 4 so what i'm gonna do is import from junit 5. okay so now we have the method ready let's run it run as junit test cases okay so it is passed so that is why we got the green here so what do you mean by that in case you are expecting something else here for example what you are expecting here employee dot class but this will return a list of employees let's check whether it is returning the true i mean it is passed or now so now it is failing because i'm expecting something here but we are returning something here so that is how we need to test the j in test cases so let's try to implement few more methods for now i'm going to change it back here and let's run it one more time and j in it okay now it is passed again so just writing a simple j unit test case is not enough if you're writing a one method in your in, in actual business we need to find out multiple scenarios to write the test cases there might be chances you will get empty list there might be chances you will get a null there will be chances you'll get only one record so though we have to write multiple test cases for the same method let's do that so we just implemented only one method correct to check only whether my JN test case is returning the proper expected type. So now let's check for some size. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the same method and paste it here. And I'm, I'm going to name this as a size test. So let's save it. And then so this is my list. Correct. Or maybe I can remove this. So size test. 
ஐ எம் எக்ஸ்பெக்டிங் மினிமம் ஐ மீன் ஐ எக்ஸ்பெக்டிங் சம் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் கவுண்ட் ஆஃப் ரெக்கார்ட்ஸ் பிகாஸ் வீ நோ தட் அவர் ஆஃப் லைன் டேட் பேஸ் வி ஹாவ் செவன் மெம்பர்ஸ் ரைட் செவன் எம்ப்ளாயீஸ் ஸோ ஆப்வியஸ்லி இட் ரிட்டர்ன் செவன் ஸோ ஹியர் வாட் ஐம் டூயிங் ஐ எம் ஜஸ்ட் காலிங் தி டெஸ்ட் மெத்தட் டெஸ்ட் டாட் கெட் எம்ப்ளாயி ஸோ வெதர் தி எம்ப்ளாயி டாட் சைஸ் வெதர் கிவிங் த சேம் ஒன் so i'm going to check asset equal see expected actual okay so expected means what i'm expecting actual means what is coming so let's remove this okay so if our employee list which returns a 7 which means this case will pass so let's run this alone run as j unit test case see that is also passed if you want to run each and every one of them in the class what i can do is this right click and run as chain and application which will give all the test cases which is in your class now we have get all employee size test which is passed and basic test which is passed so the next thing what we need to do we will have to try the empty test okay so now what i need to do is let's copy paste the same thing here and then here empty test so i'm expecting test dot employee here and i'm expecting zero counts and the employee dot size obviously we know it is it is going to be written more than a zero because we know that there are seven employees available right so now what i'm going to do i'm going to run the entire class so it will give three outputs one for a size one for basic and the last one for empty test empty test was failed because i'm expecting zero records but what actually is coming it's a different so we are getting some different data so that is why it's failed or what we can do is not equals so so now what will happen the same test which is failed earlier now it's going to pass because i am not expecting not equals so i may i am not expecting zero and it is not giving zero also so which is the other way around so now it will pass see now all of them are get passed okay so we tried enough right so let's try something else there is a different methods are available right so we have a get employee by name correct so let's try to test this method so let's create a one more test case here and this is going to be void and this code basic test basic test so let's not write too much of uh, complexity here because it's just a hard code information but when you're talking about the real mock we will get the proper stub actually so now what we need to do i want to call the get employee method which will give me single employee so now what i'm doing is so what is my input it takes a a string name as a input right so i'm going to get the input here so input is going to be uh, something like okay let's pass john as a input here so the next thing let's use the test reference to call the um, get employee by name and then we'll pass the input over there which will give employee right what is happening here so we need to ex- uh, throw the exception also because we have the exception custom and then here again i'm going to check something like assert equals or maybe it's better if you use the same okay so what i'm expecting here i'm expecting employee dot class and what actually we are receiving it from here of course we know that it is going to be receiving an employee or else what you can do is you can simply cut and paste it here which is even a simpler one so i'm expecting employee dot class and i'm calling my method and it will give me the response and it will validate whether my expected and whatever is received both are a same if it is same then this is also get passed okay so basic test is failing so expected and what is received is different okay the employee dot class and where is even this oh, okay so we need to provide the get class right okay so now let me run everything together one more time 
see now everything got paused okay so what is the problem with this approach just think about the scenario so here the key element is the get employee method this is the one which will feed all the information to the different methods but whenever you call this method the data it's going to be remains the same it's never going to be changed so that's not the right thing to do right so when you have a different kind of data for different different methods you can perform some different operations but if you keep the same data for all the test method obviously we'll end up with some issue right so that is where the mockito framework comes into the picture and that will help us to make this situation even better so instead of keeping the same data for all the methods we can create some own methods which will mock the data for the implementation so let's start implementing mockito for the same set let's create a new class and then we'll try to implement the mock test cases for employee service hello everyone so we discussed about what will happen when you're using jnu test cases here because whenever i call this method i always provide the same set of data to work but we need to find a way how i can pass individual data for each and every functionality because i cannot test with the same data for all the data in test cases right because that doesn't make any sense right so now that is where the mock framework is going to help us so now we are going to create a new class here and i'm going to call them as a employee service mock test okay so first whenever you are trying to create a mock test first you need to tell i mean you need to provide the compiler which mock you going to use we're going to provide mock service so because the service which you are using business service right so j unit add whenever i call the j unit method it is not it's not supposed to call this exact method because whenever this method happen it is going to the database and it trying to fetch data but j unit is not supposed to do that because because if it depends on that method which means even for my j in test cases i have to establish a connection to the database which i don't want to do that right so what i'm going to do i'm going to provide some a mock here so for the business service so let's do that i'm going to create a mock here for business service and let's import the mockito okay the so next thing but if you're providing something like that it will whenever you try to this instance and if you're trying to make call the methods it will go to the business service but i don't want that to be happen right so that is why i'm going to create a mock here so mock the method which will create the mock service so here what i'm going to do what is the class i'm trying to create a mock for it business business service start class so let's import a mock so wait a minute okay so equal to mock and business services dot class because this is the class i'm trying to create a mock and let's import the static method in it because mock is a static method inside the mockito okay so the next thing okay so now we have the mock ready so now all we need to do is let's perform the same functionality whatever we tried before so this is our employee service test right let's copy the first method let's go back to employee mock service and i'm going to paste the same method here and because this is the thing which we want to ignore it because because i want to pass a specific set of data whenever i call this method correct so let's remove this so we're going to use a method called when so the when method which help us whenever you invoke some method or some functionality it will allow us to provide some a specific data to the method for example here uh, whenever we call the uh, employee dot service dot let me put it here service dot get employee so whenever you call this method i want this service to return a specific set of data which i provided in the mock not from the original service so that is where the when method is going to help us when this method calls what do you want to return 
then return some specific data i don't want to mess up here so i'm going to create a separate class and separate method and that will give us a list of employee information so i'm going to create something called mock data dot and that is the class name under the class mock one test data okay so obviously it'll end up with an issue because the class is not existing so i'm going to create the class and not in the, under the test cases let's create a folder called data and create and then the class has been created and the next thing we need to create the method as well create method so now it's returning list of employee save it come back here okay same so now i'm in the line number whenever this method is called i want my mock of service has to return this data we don't have any information in it but let's add it later so what i'm gonna do assert equal so i'm gonna check the uh, type maybe so this is going to return a list of arrays right can we check that or maybe we can check the size because we don't have any data in it right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the mock one test data i'm gonna provide some data to it so mock data and control we paste it and return the data so new new array list and here array start as list and i'm gonna pro pass the p1 comma b2 so whenever this method is called it will give you this data okay let's go back to the mock so here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the asset equals so what is expected and what is actual so let's remove this so i'm expecting the list size is going to be array list so maybe what we can do is let's check the uh, type so i'm gonna use the asset same here so i'm expecting um, arrays array list dot class okay so what is coming from this method whenever get employee method is called control c and control v so when this method is called it's going to return something which is nothing but a list of employee which is going to be a array list correct so and i'm going to get the class for it okay so now we have the first test case ready so whenever this method called i'm going to return some specific data to it and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run it. Okay, the disk card success because I'm expecting a array list and I'm receiving a array list. Okay, so let's try the same method for a size test. So control C and control V here and let's using size test. So here I'm gonna use the uh, mock one test data, and I'm, I'm I'm gonna use the asset equals here. So what I'm gonna do is, so I'm expecting two employees here, and let's see, services dot get employee dot size. So this method which will give us. So whenever you go and click this method, you can see that it is going to uh, this implementation here, which is my our actual service. But when it is running, it will not go there because we have the mock services so go to the mocking place. So that is where when you're using service.get employee method, we are returning this data. So instead of going to the original data, it is going to our mock one test data. It will provide the data back. So now let's run this alone. Run as J in a test. So I'm expecting a two and I'm getting two. So size test is passed. Okay, let's try one more way. Let's test it for uh, empty. So let's create one more method and I'm gonna name it as a empty uh, test. And here I'm gonna create one more method called mark2.test. This method is not existing anymore, so I'm gonna create it now. And which is gonna return obviously an empty array list. Okay, let's go back. And I'm expecting a list size as a zero here. And let's see what's gonna ha happen because I'm calling mock2. Obviously it will give the empty result set. I mean empty array list. So that is also passed. Let's call all the methods. Then as chain test cases. So all the test cases have been passed successfully. So 
size test success and basic test is success and also the empty test is success okay so let's there is a one more method right to get employee by name so we can try that as well and let's go back to our mock test and let's add the method okay so this is the next method which we are trying okay let's think about this scenario so how i'm gonna do that so you can do this way as well but you wanted to try something different so i want whenever uh, this method is called i want to return a single employee or sim single person details okay so i don't want to put, put it here so in j unit whenever you are using j unit right so we have a different type of annotation method so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create one more annotation here at before all which means this is the one is going to execute before executing any other test method. So I'm going to call them method as a like static and void void init method. So here what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try some information. So this is going to be called before all the methods, right? So what I can do is I can do the implementation here. Let's make it sorry. Let's make it much more efficient way. So what I'm going to do. So which means do we need to provide this? We don't need it, right? Okay, let's make it a static here. Okay, so now we have the business service. So what I'm trying to tell you here. So whenever this particular service, when the service dot get employee by name. So what I need to do, I need to pass some name here so like John so whenever I pass John I want our mock data to return some specific employee information so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the mock data again mock data dot and let's create the same return single employee this method obviously which is not existing right so let's create the method. So let's copy this method, this one alone. So I'm returning P1 because I'm I'm expecting to return a single employee. So now let's go back. So what will happen when you're doing that? So what is there are here? because we have the custom exception right so I don't have to specifically mention in each and every method uh, whenever this method is called what needs to be done and which needs to be returned but since I'm using it here why I'm doing it here because all of them are using the same method correct so whenever they are calling the same method I want to return some different kind of a data that is the reason I'm providing this implementation here but this I'm providing in the beginning so whenever this method called I want this data needs to be returned okay so now here we have a get employee by name right can we try that so what we're gonna do is um, let's say assert equals correct so assert i'm checking the height equals so i'm expecting in the employee height is 175 and first let's call the service services dot get employee by name and I'm passing the name as John here. So this will return an employee. Correct. And then I need to retrieve that get height because I'm checking the height. Correct. 175. So let's run it. Or I don't need the input. I can directly use it because I directly passed it here. Right. So I'm going to run it. Okay. So the reason we are getting 165 as a height, but I'm expecting as a 175. So that is why it's got failed. So let me modify the 165. So because whenever this method called, what is happening? This employee data will be returned, right? So the height is 165. Okay, let's go back and run it again. This time this will successfully executed because I'm expecting the height as 165 and I'm getting the same data. Okay, so maybe I can check this type as well. So control C and put it 
control V here and basic test or I can say as a type test. And here what I'm trying to do is assets, let's try asset same not the equal. So what I'm expecting here employee dot class I'm expecting a type as an employee class but what it is returning it's height right so I'm removing this one so this will uh, eventually it's going to return the employee dot class so in case if it's returning anything else which means null or empty it's gonna end up with the issue so right click and run as JNT cases so what is happening here so we got expected employee and returned something else Okay, the reason is it is returning the employee, but we need to get the class, right? Short get class. Let's save it and run it one more time to see whether it is working. Of course, it will work. See, it is successful now. So now let's run each and every, I mean, all of them. So run as JNT cases. Okay, so let's have a look at it. So get all employees, size test, type test, basic test, and by name test. So everything has been successfully completed. So this is how we need to start creating our J unit test cases. First we tried with the J unit and then we tried with the mock test. And whatever we tried so far, it is just a, maybe we can call them as just 10% or just 15 percentage of the mock it on J unit. Okay, so whenever you write an application, make sure you're writing a proper test case with the different scenarios. And you might be seeing like, so you return a lot of methods in the business service like get employee, delete employee, update employee, add employee, and get employee by name. But you only tried with these two. The reason why I used these two, if you know how to implement the logic for these two, all of them are is pretty easy. You don't have to worry about that because you can implement it. So let's see each of the next video will talk about the additional stuffs.